Three, two, one. This is an RC plane. I've crashed a lot of these. Now, almost all of these crashes happen when I'm trying to hand launch the plane. It's pretty difficult to throw the plane into the air and then quickly move your hand back to the controller to keep it from crashing. At least for me, it is. And the other thing is that it's actually kind of dangerous hand launching planes like this that have a rear propeller. As you throw them, your hand gets pretty close to the spinning propeller, which can really cut you up if it touches you. So today, we're gonna figure out a way to fix this. Now, there are of course RC plane catapults out there that are meant for this, but I wanna do something more interesting. I wanna do something called a zero length launch. Now this concept is not new. It was actually experimented with a lot in the 1950s. During this time frame, the United States, the Soviet Union, and Germany all built working prototypes and actually had some successes. Ultimately, all these programs got canceled. But could this idea work on an RC scale? I came up with two different designs to test this out. One design uses pneumatics, and the other one uses rockets. And both of them are gonna launch this plane. The pneumatic design starts off with a trip to the hardware store to pick out a bunch of PVC pipe and fittings. This system is really a crossover between a potato cannon and a pneumatic actuator. And this whole thing is built by just cutting down all this pipe and then fitting it together with a bunch of these PVC fittings. Got it all over there. If you've never worked with PVC before, this purple stuff is actually a cleaner for the pipe, and then the glue gets applied to both sides of the joint. When you put these together, the glue bonds almost instantly, and it actually fuses the plastic together, which is really cool. All of this pipe and fittings forms what will be the base of the launcher, and it will also act as the air tank. Now my goal here is that when a switch is pressed, all of the air from this tank will rush into the cylinder and basically just kind of push or yeet the plane into the air. Releasing all of this air is actually just done by this valve, which screws into place, and this valve is normally just meant for sprinkler systems and can be actuated with a 12 volt signal. On the other end of the valve, the barrel or the cylinder just screws into place. And at this point, we essentially just have a potato cannon. Oh, one part I was really excited about on this was these sweet Schrader valve to quarter NPT fittings I found. These things just thread into a tapped hole and they make it so you can just fill this thing up with a bike pump if you want, which is really nice. I know it's a small weird thing to be excited about, but these type of fittings are awesome. There's actually kind of a lot of cantilevered weight right here. So I'll probably put in some sort of support, just like this. So using a scrap piece of wood, I jotted down a few measurements and then hopped into Onshape to design this support piece. This support is actually about as simple as it gets to design. But since this whole system's purpose is to basically yeet planes into the air, I figured it was only fitting to add a little bit of flair to the design. Now this part's actually pretty big. So to print it, I'm gonna use my H2D printer, which is made by Bamboo Lab, who is also the sponsor of this video. The H2D has two different hot ends, which makes switching between filaments super easy and makes multicolor prints like this no problem at all. On top of the speed this printer gives you, it allows you to switch between two different materials mid printing. And I'm not just talking about different colors. You can switch out totally different types of plastic, including crazy plastics like this carbon fiber nylon, which is one of the most durable 3D printed materials I've ever used. To show you how beneficial this is, I'm gonna print the piston piece for this launcher. Normally I would just design a piece that slides down the barrel and is a pretty tight fit. And then I would add some O-ring grooves to make a better seal. But with this, I can actually print the O-rings into the part. All I need to do is print the main body out of PLA and then I can print the rings out of TPU, which is a flexible plastic. All right, moment of truth, will it fit? Oh yeah, that's perfect. It compresses the O-ring a little bit. And it fits right in. This capability literally blew my mind and this is gonna open up a whole new world of printing options. I'll put a link in the description below to where you can find out more about these printers and you'll see me use them more in the rest of this video and in future projects. For the launcher, I didn't really love the white look of the PVC. So I painted it a color that turned out to be very similar to nacho cheese. I can't say it's my favorite color, but it is bright. So that's good, I guess. So I've got the launcher here. It's all painted, very nice. It's this nice mustard yellow color. I think we're gonna epoxy this support piece in place. I also really messed up. I made the text go all the way through so it reads correctly this way. But on the other side, it's backwards. It spells T. Oh well, you live and you learn, I guess. When I added the mount, I started off by epoxying it in place. Initially, I thought this would be strong enough, but I don't think I prepared the surface enough. All I did was scratch it up and then sand it briefly. While I was doing some initial testing without all the cameras on, the whole support piece just came flying. Oh, she's fine. 
So I made a new version that uses some pipe clamps and you'll see me use that throughout the rest of the video. To actually initiate the launch, all I need is a 12 volt signal to open the solenoid valve. So I built this like cartoon style launch button, which was another multicolor print on the H2D and it turned out fantastic. I think I'm addicted to multicolor prints at this point. So all I should need to do is set this thing up in the field and then press the button and we'll launch a plane. Uh, I'll be honest, it feels a little ridiculous mowing a 30 acre field with a push mower. Luckily this thing's easy enough to assemble. Gotta do is put this into here. After mowing this comically small patch of grass for me to work in, we could finally set this thing up for real and give it a test. And this whole thing just screws together, which makes it super easy to assemble. Perfect. This is the rod that actually does the pushing. And it just slides right down this barrel. And this cap locks everything right in place. It's basically just a big pneumatic piston. We'll see if it works. Now to actually attach the plane to the pneumatic thing, we're gonna use this. This clips right on here, just like that. And then if we, call, if we walk over here, it'll fit right into here, just like that. All right, we're now going to fill this thing up Install the plane on here. Okay. <laughs> I'm not convinced it's gonna work. This whole thing might just be, this might be the end of this plane. Let's put it that way. Whoa. I think we should start with the motor on a little bit. Maybe. All right, here goes nothing. Three, two, one. Oh! <sighs> if you can't tell, my mind was absolutely blown at how well that worked. That was incredible. Way better than your launches. Oh yeah. It's a little, a little unstable. I've got it in like a fly-by-wire mode and it is not, not properly tuned. I'll put it that way. All right, I'm gonna see if I can land it without crashing it too bad. As I brought this in for a landing, I wasn't paying attention and almost smoked the tripod. While I was coming in to land it, I <laughs> clipped the tripod. Luckily, just barely, so nothing, nothing catastrophic happened, but barely clipped the tripod. <laughs> Watching this thing back in super slow-mo, you can see just how well it worked. This rod is essentially pushing the plane through its center of gravity, which makes for a very stable launch. And if you look at the original zero length launch footage from the 1900s, that's the exact same thing that they did. Plane is back completely in one piece. This little piece, which I thought would actually break, stayed intact as well. So. This also did not go quite as planned. So the pipe, this should still be in there. It's supposed to like kind of capture it and not let it go loose. But it appears there was enough force that it actually broke the epoxy bond I had, mangled my O-rings a little bit. And the epoxy was strong enough that it actually broke off some of the PVC. So it wasn't just the epoxy that failed, the whole thing failed. But still, this method re really impressed me. I did not think that was gonna work as well as it did. All right, now that was one way of doing a zero distance takeoff. My other way is a little more exciting and it involves rockets. I got tired of carrying stuff. So I brought the tractor. Hot glue, makes the world go round. Now, before we try to launch the plane, I wanted to at least test out one of these motors. These are just meant for small hobby rockets, and I haven't fired one of these off since I was a kid. Now, these motors use these little igniters, which are just the absolute worst. They always short circuit. So I put some caps on tape there to hopefully fix that. These igniters are literally just a tiny wire with a little bit of pyro material on them. And that small ignition of the pyro powder ignites the rocket. And I'll be able to use the same test box, which just applies 12 volts and should light this off. Everybody ready? 
three, two, one. Perfect. That was awesome. In slow-mo, you can see the rocket engine come up to pressure as the reaction speeds up. Then it starts creating thrust as all of that reaction product gets exhausted through the nozzle. And then after the rocket shuts down a few seconds later, a small charge fires, which is normally meant to pop a parachute. You can also see I was pretty caught off guard with how loud this was, but the rocket seemed to work great and everything was very contained. I'll be honest, this might be a little close. Probably should have brought a bigger wire, but that looked pretty controlled. So hopefully two of those on a plane isn't too crazy. We'll see, this might be the end of my plane. Now to actually launch this thing, you need two motors, just cause this plane's pretty heavy. And then this slides right onto there. So what should happen here is these rockets are gonna boost it into the air. And then when the ejection charge fires, it should separate this entire gray piece off of here and then just let the plane fly away. Hopefully, fingers crossed. The benefit of this method, which is almost identical to the original zero length launch test, is that it needs very little launch equipment. There's no launch rail or anything like that. It's literally, you just rest the plane on two cinder blocks like I have here and you press the launch button. Just like last time we're gonna give it a little bit of throttle, I'll hit the button and then hopefully it just lifts off and then flies away. Again, this could go horribly wrong. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh. Get off. From this view on the wing, you can definitely see that something wasn't quite right with these rockets. Before the rockets burned out, it looked like there was molten rocket fuel spewing all over the place, which is usually not a good thing. This also created a lot of fire and flames up where the engines mounted to the plane. In the super slow-mo, you can definitely see some sort of failure happened with the left rocket. My theory is the piece that blocks the ejection charge from the rocket propellant blew out, which means you basically had uncontained burning of the rocket propellant, so it probably wasn't making much thrust, and it was just torching the plane the entire time. Somehow this thing miraculously had enough thrust to still get off the ground and make it into flight. Do you think OSHA would approve of that, Michael? Uh, no, that was not OSHA approved in the slightest. What might be OSHA approved is me landing this thing as quickly as possible because being an absolute menace. So I'm gonna bring it back in. I'm literally like hovering right now. There's so much wind. All right, pull up. All right, coming back towards me. Pull up. <laughs> Was not as soft as I wanted, but we're on the ground. Let's go check it out. It's in one piece. We can fly this thing again. <laughs> Look at this. From that ejection charge, the whole thing is just charred. They even melted this plastic a little bit. That's crazy. All right, now, the other cool thing is, before we put the tube in here, we can actually just use this whole launcher as a cannon. So, I built this. These little mini rockets that I can shove in there, and then we'll see how high they go. To track how high they go, I've got this, which is a little altimeter that you put into model rockets. All right, so it's ready. Put it in there, and then we'll screw this cap back on. All right, and then to make this fit better into the barrel, I printed these little sabos for it. So now it's a perfect circle and there shouldn't be a lot of air that moves past it in the barrel. We'll put this right down here, just like that. Use this to compact it in there. And now let's launch this thing. All right, I wanna get a... three, two, one. Oh yeah. I think I saw where it hit the ground. Oh my God. <laughs> Come look at this. It's like three inches in the ground in a puddle of water. Oh, I hope that little thing was waterproof. Let's 
try to get it out of there as fast as possible. Oh, it's just caked in my, I can't believe we hit a puddle out of an entire field. Hit a puddle, oh, there we go. Look at that. Max altitude, 415 feet. That's not too bad. Now, originally I was gonna launch a camera too, but with how muddy everything is, I feel like I'm just gonna destroy a camera, which may not be worth it. Eh, or should I just do it? Long story short, I decided to do it, and I ended up getting a pretty epic shot. Good luck. Here we go. All right, losing a camera in three, two, one. See it? I found it. Oh, it's it's so far on the ground. Hey yo! All right, well, we successfully launched it in two different zero length takeoff methods. One with new bag piston, and then one with rockets. Personally, the rockets were the best, but also it kind of left the plane a little charred, so maybe I don't recommend that one as much, but it is cool. If you guys have any ideas on uh, other ways to launch it, let me know. Uh, I'd be interested to hear, but uh, for now, that's all for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.